Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Quite Frankly. Quite Frankly is the web podcast in which we look at new gear, all the gear which I find interesting, and what not more. Today, something that's really important if you don't want to lose any images. We're going to take a look at the Synology NAS series. So join me for today's episode of Quite Frankly, it's all about the NASs. <laughs> Okay, so at the moment I'm testing the new Synology 1019 Plus NAS. And I was really struggling with my review because in all honesty, I've reviewed some NASs in the past. And what can you tell? The CPU is faster, it looks better, there's new software. But in the end, as a photographer, as a videographer, the only thing that's important is what can you do with the bloody thing? What makes your life easier? So. I just decided to quit the whole stuff about gear and all kinds of technical stuff because you can find them online. I'm just going to tell you how I use the Synology NAS systems in our setup. And let's start with something really simple, backups. Now we take great care of our images. When we're on a trip, our private shots and of course our work, we want to make sure that those images are there for eternity. Well, some images probably not, but most images we want to keep, of course. I always tell people photography is freezing moments in time that never come back again. So if you lose them with digital, it's gone. And this is actually where a NAS comes in really, really handy. Now, the first thing I have to explain about a NAS is, and again, I don't want to do it too technical, so I'm going to do it really simple, as we Dutch say in Jip and Janneke taal. You have several hard drives in one housing. And those hard drives, they combine together as one big volume, meaning for you, one big hard drive or two if you want to have two. The main thing about a NAS is security. That means if you have a NAS with five hard drives, only four of those hard drives are really used. The other one is, well, safe there for if one of the other hard drives fail, it will rebuild itself if you just put in a new hard drive. Now, if you start with a NAS for the first time, this can be a little bit confusing because you put five four terabyte drives in, you expect to get 20 terabytes of course, and you don't. You get about 15 or 17 and you go like, what's going on? Well, that depends on the NAS and about the settings, but a large part of that hard drive space is saved to make sure that if one hard drive fails, you can just remove that hard drive and it builds it up again. In other words, if you save an image or a video file, it isn't stored on one hard drive, but it's scattered around all those hard drives and that makes sure that it's a really safe solution. But don't feel too safe. I hear a lot of people that go like, hey, I have a NAS, so I have nothing to worry about. Do realize that sometimes disaster can strike. And at that point, even a NAS isn't 100% secure. So my advice is always to use a DAS system next to the computer. That's a direct attached storage. Those are blazingly fast. And then use a NAS system on your network and preferably in another room that if something goes wrong in one room, you still have the NAS in the other room. And of course, you need a third backup in a different location. Well, if all three backups fail, eh, probably doesn't matter anyway. So let's take a simple look at what you can do with backups. Now, one of the things you can do with a backup is of course, just do it manually. In other words, you just start up a software package and you start copying. For example, you can use Carbon Copy Cloner on the Mac or Free File Sync on the PC. But in all honesty, there are a gazillion solutions out there. Just find the one that you like. The problem with manual labor is that, well, don't tell anybody, but the human race is getting pretty, pretty lazy. So you have to press a button or you have to start an app. Isn't it way nicer to just do it automatically? Well, of course, there's also solutions for that. For example, you can use a hot folder on your computer, just start the software automatically when your computer starts and it will start backupping. But that's only one solution. You can, of course, also set your Synology NAS on your phone because there are plenty apps also available on Android or iOS. I've set it up, for example, that I use DS Photo Station on my phone and on the NAS. And that means that as soon as I come into our studio, my phone starts unloading all the images. And as soon as that's done, 
the NAS will have all those images and they're still on my phone. And that's a really cool solution because now you don't have to take all the images off your phone every time. And let's be honest, when is the last time that you emptied your phone? And a week? And a week has like 1200 images on her phone. And once every year I back up it just to be sure because you never know, right? And that happens to a lot of us. Nobody likes to just connect their phone with a cable. It's way nicer that as soon as you come home or in your studio, it just starts offloading by itself. And DS Photo is great for that. But there are many more solutions. So let's take a look at some other ones. Now, of course, we all love movies. I, I love superhero movies, horror movies, science fiction movies, comedies. In all essence, if it's a good movie, I just love it. And also Synology has a solution for that. What do you think about a total system on your NAS that will actually stream your videos straight to your media player? But how do you get those videos on there? Well, of course, I can't tell you because in some countries, well, most countries, it's not perfectly legal, but if you really want to, and I'm already telling you, you can't because, well, you can't, there are software packages available also via the App Store in which you can download video files on your NAS. So you don't have to do anything, it just downloads everything and the moment you're done, well, you're done for your movie, you just start it up with an external app and you stream it to your favorite media streamer. So, also for multimedia and your home theater, the Synology NASUS has the solution. It does all the downloading. You can remotely trigger it and upload stuff that you want to download. And it also streams the video, including 4K HDR, of course, to your home theater system. Isn't that awesome? And it does the same thing for music too. Okay, but there's more. Let's take a look at some other stuff that you can do with this NAS. Now, of course, we all want a website, right? But how do you create a website? Well, you have to get to an external hosting company. Well, in the old days, this, of course, was 100% true. Let's be honest, um, I think a year ago, our download was 20 megabits, but our upload was 0 0.4. Yes, boys and girls, that's how we did the first digital classrooms, via satellite and later via 4Gs, so via our mobile phone. So hosting your own website at home, eh, not really a good solution, unless of course you want to wait for 10 minutes for one image to load. And with a portfolio of over 100 images, nah, that doesn't work. But nowadays we have fiber in our studio, and our fiber isn't even the fastest. We just took the lowest fiber possible, and that's already 100, 100. Now for most people that's more than enough to run your website. But how do you get your website on a NAS? Well, Synology has a special solution for this and it's actually great because it's compatible with almost every single builder outside. Now a lot of people will use for example WordPress. No problem, Synology got you covered. And if you want something else, just check on the website of Synology if it's compatible and otherwise there will be more than enough solutions. Because, well, as long as you have that connection to the outside world and your NAS, and it's safe, that's very important, you can run your whole website from your NAS system. But especially for WordPress, and that's the stuff that we use and we tested that out, it works absolutely awesome. But, of course, there's more. Now we all know Dropbox, right? And OneDrive and ugh, Mega or what not more. There's always this problem with those online storage solutions that there's a limit to your upload. For example, you can upload 100 gigabytes or 50 gigabytes. Wouldn't it be absolutely awesome to never think about that again? If you want 20 terabytes online, you just put 20 terabytes online. That's where FileStation comes in. FileStation on the NAS is a really cool solution if you want to share images or video or documents with your partners or with your well, friends or your family or whatever. In FileStation you can literally just tell people go to this link and you can encrypt the link, you can give a password on the link, you can have a time code on the link that it's only available for 10 hours or 15 days or whatever and they can download the link straight from your NAS. Now you might wonder, is this all safe? Well, you can never have it 100% safe, of course. But there are so many solutions in the Synology NAS and so much you can tweak. If you know a little bit about network, you can really go into the advanced settings. But if you don't know anything about networks, just leave it in the default settings. And Synology got you pretty much covered for, well, working with your file systems in a really, really safe way. But 
<laughs> there's more. Besides file stations, there's also another solution that's really cool about the Synology NASes. You have a VPN option. And, well, you also have an option to literally, via the NAS, get to all your other computers in the network. That means that if you work on a location and you go like, hey, I need a lot of storage, but I also need to well, have access to a computer in our network, Synology got you covered there too. This is more for the advanced people. Most people won't use this option, but if you need it, it's there. And now, let's go into the freaky stuff. You all know I absolutely love my Huawei P30 Pro. 40 megapixels, raw files, what's not to like in a mobile phone? As a joke, I always tell them, this is a camera that can also make phone calls and run some apps. And it's literally true, I use it mainly as my camera. Now, I snap a lot of images during our trips and of course during digital classrooms and during workshops and whatnot more. Those behind the scenes images, which we share on Patreon, are absolutely great to get an insight in what we're doing. But how do you get those images off your phone? Well, in one of the scenes I already told you that as soon as I hit the door of the studio and I'm in range of my Synology NAS, or in other words, in range of my network, it will start downloading everything from my phone into DS Photo. Now there's a separate folder on my NAS. If I go there, I can see all the images. And that actually got me thinking. You guys know I love shooting tethered, right? And we use Capture One for that, connected to our medium format camera or to the Sony. And it means that if you take a picture, it's immediately on Capture One for you to view. Now, during workshops, I often also show what you can do with a mobile phone. It's not to show people that, wow, look at this new P30 Pro, it's an amazing phone. It's more to let people realize that it's not the camera, it's not the lens, it's not the lighting. It's the creativity of the photographer that makes the images. So even with a mobile phone, without any strobes, you can get great images. But it's very frustrating to put a cable on there, take the images off, maybe take another shot. So wouldn't it be cool if you could just take a picture and then see the image appear in Capture One right away? Let me show you how we set that up. And as you can see, it's incredibly simple. Okay, I'm behind the computer and I'm gonna show you in Capture One how I set it up. Now, in Capture One, of course, it's just software. So if you have Lightroom or you use DxO or Alien Skin, it's exactly the same way to set it up. What you need to set up is some sort of hot folder. Now in Capture One, that's the Capture folder. In Lightroom, you can literally use a hot folder. Now the cool thing about Lightroom and hot folders is that it will actually automatically show the newest image coming in. In Capture One, it only shows the newest image when we use USB or Firewire to actually trigger the camera. So in a moment, you're gonna see that the images come in but they don't show on the screen. So if you're using Lightroom, in this case, you're actually in an advantage because in Lightroom, it does automatically show those images. But most of the tethering we do in Capture One, so that's why we actually choose to show it in Capture One. Okay, the only thing you have to change on the computer is actually that here you can see my studio NAS and I have this tethered folder there. You press and you just make that your Capture folder as we already have here. And now it's very, very simple. I just aim my camera towards my intern and I'm using night mode. So we're gonna take a four second exposure, five second actually. There we go, it's a, some sort of HDR mode. And the moment it took the image, it's now uploading via Wi-Fi and we will see the image coming in. And there we go. So here we have the image of our intern. There you go. So in essence, we created a tethered solution for your mobile phone. Isn't that just awesome? And now I have to be honest, these are JPEG files and they already take a few seconds to come in. If you also shoot the DNGs or RAW files, it takes a little bit longer. This is not something, of course, that you do with a client. If you want instant results, you use USB and you use, of course, a normal proper camera. Although this one isn't shabby either. But it's cool that you can actually now use this, for example, in an educational part. You take a picture and a few seconds later it's on the screen. You don't have to connect it via cable again. And let's be honest, this is faster than using a cable. And it's, it's just something we have a little bit of fun with. So you need DS Photo for this on your smart device. And you need, of course, DS Photo running on your NAS. Then just create a folder, 
make that the hot folder and the images will come in. There's one thing that's very important on smartphones from Android and probably maybe also on iOS. Now, Android has this option of power management and it can be really, really aggressive, meaning as soon as I'm in my camera, it will shut down every other app. It's still running in the backdrop, but it's not actively running. So it will only run again if you open up that app. So make sure that in your Android device, you actually go to your app settings and put everything on manual and make sure that you allow the app to be active even if there's another app on top. Because that way, DS Photo in the backdrop can actually just capture those images while your camera is active and send them to your NAS. I just love this solution. Okay, let's go back to the studio. Well, studio, let's go back to the green screen. Now, as you can see, it's a very different review than what you normally expect without all the technical stuff and whatnot more. And let's be honest, it's about what the device does for you as a photographer and videographer. And again, the specs you can find online. But I hope that you understand that if you buy a Synology NAS, you get a lot of extra stuff. It's not just a device that sits in your network and collects data. It's so much more. But you have to take a little bit of time to just go through the App Store and see which apps you want to install on your NAS. And do make sure that you always run your security updates. And of course, keep your Fire Scanner updated because you never know what you download from the internet. So beware. And well, there's one final thing I really need to add. In a NAS system, you need hard drives, right? Now, of course, you can put any hard drive in a NAS and it will work. But in essence, you need hard drives that are designed to run 24-7, 365 days a year or 364 days some years. So anyway, you need hard drives that are there forever and that just keep spinning. We call those NAS drives. They're specially designed for use in a NAS. Now, the cool thing about another brand that I really highly regard is Seagate. They have a series of hard drives called Iron Wolves. If you fit those in your Synology NAS, you're also eligible for free data recovery. So if something goes wrong, if disaster strikes, so if more than one hard drive fails and you really are, well, totally in panic because you lost all your data, remember, if you have a Synology drive with Iron Wolf hard drives from Seagate, you have free data recovery. Now do check the offer because this is not available in every country or every combination. Sometimes you have to buy it with the Iron Wolves. So make sure that when you buy, you check this with your local dealer. But it's a great extra added benefit for Synology and Seagate. Well, what more can you say about a NAS? It's a device that collects data and so much more. If you need a new NAS, check out Synology I will leave the link below. I highly, highly recommend them. And remember, Anawik and I ran a computer company for over 22 years. Synology NASes are without a doubt the system that, well, I don't want to say that never breaks down, but, well, return with failures are really, really low on Synology. So, as also an IT person, I highly recommend Synology. Well, that's about it. Thank you so very much for watching, guys, and see you again next time. If you like what we do, hit that like button. What do I say? Smash that like button. Tell other people about it. And of course, leave comments below. Thank you so very much. Bye-bye.